Hi everyone and welcome back. So today we are solving the ladder exercise from Codility lesson number 13. In this problem we are considering a ladder of a certain number of rungs and we have to find the number of possibilities to reach the top of the ladder knowing that we can either make one or two steps at once. So in the provided example we have a ladder of five different rungs. As a first try we can try to climb the ladder one rung at a time to reach the top or we can try by jumping at the start two rungs and then continuing one rung per step or we can also for example jump two steps or two rungs at first then two different rungs and one additional rung to reach the top of, uh, of the ladder and we can keep doing this until we have exhausted all the possible ways we could climb this ladder by combining steps of one or two rungs to reach the top for this example these are the possibilities of climbing the ladder of five rungs and we can see that we have eight different combinations that would lead us to the top of the ladder. In this problem we have to find a function that takes two arrays A and B. The array A contains the different number of rungs for different ladders and we have to find the top for each particular ladder. For example for a given array 4, 4, 5, 5 and 1 it means that we have the first ladder with four different rungs then a second one which is similar to the uh, to the first ladder then we have five rungs ladder another five rungs ladder and the last ladder is one single rung so for each of these ladders we will find all the different combinations of one rung at a time or two rungs at a time steps to reach the top of the ladder however the results might reveal large numbers we are going to represent these as 2 to the power of b. The array b is also provided as a parameter for the function. So just to make it clear, the array b will be used just to represent big numbers in a different way. Simply because from the computation point of view, some of the languages might not be able to display or to print or to deal with large numbers, especially if they are declared as integers. In C++, for example, the integers are very limited, so they have a maximum number limit. So in brief, at first we are interested in the number of rungs that are contained within the array A. Finding the number of combinations that would lead to the top of the ladder is not the most challenging part of this problem. In fact, since the rung AI can be reached either from rung AI-1 or AI-2, just as we can see here, so this particular rung, for example, can be reached with one step of two rungs from position 0 or with two steps from position 0 but one rung each. In other words, any rung AI can be reached either from rung AI-1 or AI minus two, then the different ways of reaching AI is equal to the number of ways to reach the previous step, AI minus one, plus AI minus two, plus two additional steps to uh, jump from AI minus two to AI, and AI minus one to AI. And also similarly, to reach the um, step AI minus one, or the rung AI minus one, we have to look to the two previous rungs. So it's going to be related to the ways we can combine to reach AI minus two and or plus the ways we can combine to reach the rung AI minus three because these are the two previous um, rungs before AI minus one. So as we can see for each number AI we are including the sum of two previous numbers or two previous combinations of AI minus one and AI minus two. And this is how this problem relates to the Fibonacci series. In fact, the number of combinations to reach AI is equal to the Fibonacci number of AI plus 1. And this is what we are going to use to find our solution. At this point, the problem doesn't look very challenging. We could, for example, compute the Fibonacci numbers. This is the uh, solution in Python. So first, we are declaring a result list. It's going to be full of 0 of the same length of A. And then we have the Fibonacci numbers It's uh, that we are going to store in a list. For the moment it's empty its size is length of a plus two then the second fibonacci number is equal to one and from here for these two lines we are computing simply the fibonacci numbers making the sum of fibonacci i minus one plus fibonacci i minus two then we reach the part where we are writing our um, solution so for i in range up to length of a so for each element or for each uh, ladder that is defined in the list of a because remember the list of a contains the sizes of the ladders so for each ladder we are going to read its size and we are going to uh, 
apply the formula of the Fibonacci number. So it's the result i is going to be equal to the Fibonacci number ai plus 1 modulus 2 to the power of bi. This was defined by the uh, problem itself. So we can't display or we can't return a large number. Instead of returning large numbers, we are going to return the number modulus 2 to the power of bi. And it's as simple as that. This algorithm is correct. It gives you 100% on the correctness. However, from the performance point of view, it's going to uh, be challenging to pass with 100% score. And the reason this is not a good solution is because the modulus for large numbers seems to be a very slow operation. So again, as you can see, the solution is not algorithmically challenging. However, we have to find better ways to compute the modulus of two large numbers without increasing the complexity of our solution. And at this point, the solution of this problem becomes very technical. It's not algorithmic anymore. It's something that is purely coming from the computer science background. And the best way to make things more performant or more efficient for uh, this algorithm is to replace this line by this line. Notice that now the results i is equal to the Fibonacci number ai plus 1. But here we are doing a bitwise end operator. And then it's going to be with 2 to the power of bi minus 1. So the bitwise operator, this end operator here, is going to consider the last two digits of these two numbers in binary notations. If you want to go more into details about these operations that are very commonly used for large numbers, there is a good discussion about this topic here on Stack Overflow. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. And if you want to know more about further operations, I'll put a link for another video on YouTube in any way, this solution in Python scores 100%. However, I tried to translate something like this and to fit it into a C++ language. I didn't manage to make it a 100% score. The maximum I could reach is around 83 or 87%. And so I'm not going to show you my solution here because obviously it's not the best we can achieve. So somehow this problem shows you how different coding languages can be. Okay, so I'm gonna end this video with my C++ score, the 87%. So if you have a coding interview or a coding test online such as this one, be aware which code you will be choosing to solve your problems with. Because from the algorithmic point of view, it might look the same. However, at some point, technical problems might make the difference. So this is it for this solution. I hope you guys found the information helpful. Until our next video, keep up the good work and see you next time.